Hi everyone, Mr. Taylor here again for another weather patterns lesson. Today we are doing lesson 3.2, which is titled Analyzing Data About Storms. So in this lesson, we will be doing a lot of looking at data and trying to figure out what it means, which data is actually helpful. Uh, and it's a lesson I actually like a lot, so I'm excited to be going through this with you. Um, just a quick note for you. If you are trying to do this lesson on the Amplify platform, it is actually a little bit harder because you don't quite have all of the data and information that you'll need. So using the packet provided by your teacher or just going through this lesson with me where I will have all that data put up on the screen will make it easier for you, just so you know. But let's head into our warm up. So our warm up has two sources of information. So it says below are descriptions of two different groups of sources that collected data about birds. Read about both of the sources and then answer the question below. So nice and easy. So source one, so our first place we're getting information from is a blog written by a hiking club where club members regularly report the number of birds that they see, okay? And then the other source, so the other place we're getting information from, is an article in a science journal where biologists report observations they collected about birds during a research study. Okay, so in one we've got a hiking club, in the other it sounds like it is uh, scientists in a science journal. So our question here, source one and source two are both groups of people who collected data about birds and then published their data. Which of these sources do you think would be able to give you better evidence and why do you think that? So I know if you were in my class this year, we talked about sources, we talked about some things that make some sources better than others, and hopefully you're able to kind of pick those out in these two sources here. Um, one of this is a science journal um, based on a research study. So I know that when it comes to sources, if it's from scientists, if it's for a research study, that I know that that's probably a very strong source. Um, so source two to me looks very strong. Um, whereas source one, it is a hiking club where they're uh, reporting the number of birds they see. So uh, here we've got a hiking club. So these aren't professional scientists, um, but it's something that they do regularly. So um, even though they're not professional scientists, they're still able to get some good information here. So I would say source one's probably not quite as strong as source two, um, but you know everyday citizens can be scientists as well. So um, although it might not be quite as good of a place to get information, um, you know, maybe not the worst either. Um, so that'll be our warm up for us. Uh, I'm going to switch my screen over and then we are going to start looking at some data. So let me get that for us. All right. So what I have done is I have pulled up our evidence cards for us to analyze. And basically what we're going to be doing is we are just going to be focusing on the source of the data. Um, if the source isn't very good, if it's not a, a place that's giving us information that we can trust, then we don't really need to look at their data because their data is probably not very good. So the first thing that we're going to do is just look at the sources. We're not going to look at the data at all. That'll come later. So. Our first source is card A here, and it says that the source is the National Weather Service, a government agency. So um, just by reading that name, I see that it's the National Weather Service, and it, so that means it gets a lot of data for the whole nation, and it's a government agency. So that means that it is a place with scientists who are funded by the the government, right? So for me, I would say that is probably a pretty good, well-trusted source. So I'm going to just circle it there, okay? And we'll go to the next source. Um, source B 
says it is a cartoon show on television about animals that live in Prairieville, Texas. The main character is a groundhog meteorologist. Um, here for me, there are some TV shows that can give some really good scientific information. Um, I'm not sure if the show about a groundhog meteorologist would be the best. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that one an X. All right. So I've just done examples of two. So here's what I'm going to say to you all. Um, I'm going to smooth the screen to the new evidence cards. Each time it goes to the new evidence card, I would say you should pause your screen, look at that source, and decide for yourself if you think it is a really strong source, a weak source, or maybe somewhere in the middle. So pause your screens now and take a look at card C. All right, so let's look at card C together now that you've thought for yourself. So this says the classroom blog from a sixth grade class studying the weather. The student shared data with three other classrooms in nearby towns. So for this one, um, so it is a sixth grade class that's studying weather, just like our class is studying weather right now. And they're sharing with three other classes. So I would say uh, this evidence, I would say is okay. Um, it's not maybe super strong. It's not professional scientists, but these students are still scientists. They're learning about weather just like you are and know what to look for. So I'm just going to give this one a wiggly line saying I think it's somewhere in the middle. All right, here is card D. So pause the video, take a look at it for yourself, and then unpause when you're ready to look at it together. All right, so card D says a government website focused on weather across the world. So once again, we have a government website, so we know that this is for professional scientists. It's focused on weather around the world, so they're looking at a lot of data. So I would give this one just a clear circle. I would say it's a good source. All right, here is card E. Uh, once again, take a pause, take a look, see what you think. Okay, so card E says notes taken during a huge rainstorm in South Dakota in 2012. This person regularly takes measurements of temperature and rainfall and sends them to local meteorologists. So this is someone who regularly takes data. So they're, they're probably pretty good at collecting this data and they send it to meteorologists. So they send it to weather men and weather women. Um, so it doesn't really say if they are a scientist or if they're like publishing this anywhere. So although it's someone who's probably good at collecting data, I'm going to give this one sort of a medium squiggly line. Uh, maybe not the best, but still probably useful for us. Okay. Uh, card F says it is published research article written by scientists. So take a look at that one. Pause. All right, hopefully uh, this one doesn't require too much explanation from my part. It's research by scientists. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one a circle for a good source. And our last one here is card G. So take a look at this card, give it a pause, and then meet back in a second. All right, so card G is a retired scientist who studied whales and dolphins, but decided to begin studying weather for fun. She keeps a journal with notes about the weather at her house. So um, this is a scientist, which is a positive thing we're looking for, um, but she's not a weather scientist. She studied um, marine biology, it sounds like, whales and dolphins. Um, and she keeps a journal of weather around her house. So this is another case of maybe maybe this could be helpful for us, but it's maybe not the strongest, strongest evidence. So once again, I'm going to give that a little squiggle. And we have gone through the cards. We have identified some really good ones. We have identified some maybe medium ones. And we've identified ones that not very good, probably not helpful for us. So what we're going to do, is now look at only the 
best sources of data. So I think we circled three, and those will be the only ones that we will be looking at for this next part. All right, so I am back in Amplify to look at this next section where it says uh, you will be looking closely at the weather cards you have determined to be the most reliable. And what we are going to do is identify which storms were largest and look for patterns in the data about these storms. So we're specifically looking for the biggest storms from those three cards and trying to figure out what do they have in common and uh, which storms we think the most energy transferred in. So let's go back to our cards. All right, so our first card, um, remember this was from card A from the National Weather Service. It says, on August 13th, 2014, a summer storm dumped record-breaking amounts of rain on New York, flooding the streets and leaving many people stranded in need of rescue blows the weather data. So um, we want to look for the really big storm. So here we've got this big storm here with 34 centimeters of rain compared to the average which is just 11 centimeters. And let's just look for what we see. Um, we see a fairly high temperature here. We see uh, humidity, which is the amount of water vapor in the air. So we see 78% humidity, which is a pretty large amount of water in the air. And we also have 33 miles per hour wind, which when we compare it to the average wind, 33 is way higher than the average of seven. So we've got high winds, lots of water in the air, and a fairly high temperature. Okay, so we'll keep those things in mind when we look at the next part. Um, let's see, the next one we really liked was card D, uh, which talked about a storm in 2012 that hit Beijing, China, and it broke a 60-year record and caused dangerous flooding all over the city. Uh, in a single day, Beijing received uh, 46 centimeters of rain, and... Let's see here. Let's try to pick out the important information. So the highest temperature leading up to the storm was 34 degrees Celsius. The humidity, the amount of water in the air was 92%. That is a lot. And uh, the pressure in Beijing was low and the surrounding air pressure was high. So what that helps us know is, hmm, I'm, I'm thinking about this this air pressure thing and and we learn in that last lesson that when when you have low pressure in one area and high pressure in another area that means the wind's going to blow towards the low pressure so that means it was really windy in Beijing that day so once again we've got high temperature lots of water in the air and lots of wind so I'm going to see W-I-N-D-Y. It was windy. All right. And let's look at our last card. Card F. Uh, so this was the article written by scientists. And um, usually I'm just going to kind of pick out the most important pieces here. You are welcome to totally go through this on your own and pause and then see what I have to say about it. Um, but it says that usually the rainfall is 74 centimeters in the month of July, okay? Um, but there is a record-breaking amount of rainfall. And in a single day, they had 94 centimeters of rain. That is crazy. That is a huge amount of rain for a single day. Okay, so let's see. This storm was different because of unusual area of low pressure that surrounded by an area of high pressure so that's that same idea as the last example where you've got the low pressure area you have the high pressure area so that that means the wind is going to move towards that low pressure so once again it is windy This caused air parcels full of water vapor to be moved high up into the surface by wind. Yeah, and that matches what we've learned. Uh, good research study. Uh, so, our questions for us to answer then would be, 
What do all these big storms have in common? Hmm. I'm not going to answer that one for you. You can go back in the video, find the different examples, and uh, piece together what you think they all have in common. Uh, our second question, does wind seem to be a factor that leads to larger storms? Um, and once again, I think you should go back through the video, just kind of pause when I go to each of those cards, and decide for yourself, does wind seem to be a factor? And our last question is, do you think the larger storms lost more or less energy than the larger storms? Now, none of these cards talked about energy, so you're going to have to use what you learned earlier in this unit to answer that question. Um, I trust that you all will be able to do that. And that is it for today's lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoyed going through these evidence cards. Um, I always love looking at evidence as a way to kind of deepen my understanding of the stuff we've been learning. And I hope that this gave you a little bit more information about wind uh, and how wind is able to affect these storms when they've got that high temperature and also that huge amount of water vapor in the air. Um, hope you all are staying safe out there and take care. Goodbye.